Hey everyone, I just wanted to do this quick recording to approach a question that I see get asked a lot, especially in the uh, Facebook communities and online randomly. And it appears there's a bit of a, uh, a mixture of opinion with regards to what we're allowed to do with the wine regulations on the 238218 course, the 18th edition. It appears that some training centres are uh, taking the regs book away and giving a clean copy before the exam or they're taking all of the tabs out <clears throat> before the exam itself and this kind of spins conversations about you know, can you tab can't you tab can you highlight can't you highlight and so i kind of just wanted to make a little video on it just so it, you know if anyone asks you can just share it to kind of explain so i'm gonna keep it short so what you need to do to find this for yourself is if you go to Google and you do City and Guilds 238 to 18, the 18 doesn't matter, 2382 should get you here, you should end up on a page that is similar to, to this. So this is their qualification page. There's information on the qualification that was last updated, uh, where it's available, who should be studying, etc, etc. But all I want you to do is go to this tab here for documents. If you click that, there are additional documents and then there are level three documents. Now the level three documents, this is the um, <clears throat> the qualification handbook. So if I click that, this is a free access. I haven't got a password. This is public information, you know. So you need to read this because the training centres should be reading and matching their program of training to this. Another area of discussion, but you'll notice that in this it does say the recommended learning hours is thirty five hours with a total qualification time of forty. This is another debate, but you can see what I'm saying. This is the requirement of the course, and any training company needs to start with that and then provide sound judgment as to why they would go away from this. But if I go down, one thing that also gets asked is the pass rate, 80%, 60%. I hear people say it's 80 all the time. I personally haven't had anyone less than 80, so I'm not sure, but it does say in this handbook, here, this is the assessment structure, and it does say the pass mark for this examination is approximately 60%. So I have to keep saying that to people when they ask me what the pass mark is. Um, but I'll always always say to them, but you want to go 80 or higher. But the pass mark is there. Now, either sitting girls have that wrong in their handbook, or that's the pass mark. Okay, this is a free document. It's not, <clears throat> it's not a paid document. Download it, read it, understand it if you want to. But to cover the main area here, what we can do with the book, this other bit, additional documents in there there's this one electrotechnical permitted reference material if we click that and we open that up we'll then see that there's a bit of information calculators non-programmable full assessments but may not be necessary any suitable resource materials electronic copies you know cannot be used as externally marked assessments but then we get to here examinations allow publication so where it's the regulations the on-site guide or any other guidance that are permitted they must not contain additional notes or pages within the publication what this is saying is if you've been given uh, practice papers or if you've been given pages and pages of notes and examples and formula and workflow those need to be exempt from the regulations but it doesn't mean you cannot write in the book if you see further down it does say here the list below details what is and isn't deemed to be acceptable so what is permitted what is permitted is the core agenda so there is a core agenda to the 18th edition if you were to download that for free then you can add that into the rear of the book so obviously it's going to rewrite some content in uh, uh, 511 it's going to rewrite some content in a couple of other pages um, if you um look further we've got amendments which have been published by them as additional pages they can be put in then it says stick on paper use as page reference so that's your tabs so tabbing is allowed um i always make sure people don't overdo it because sometimes tabbing can be excessive you shouldn't be tabbing part one part two part three part four because you should be flicking and identifying the numbers of each regulation so tabs that say part one part two part three tabs that say appendix one appendix two they're a little bit of a waste of time Highlighting text within the publication. That is acceptable. You're allowed to highlight text within the publication. Very short handwritten descriptors. This is what I wanted to pass across mostly in this because people say you can't write in the book. You can write in the book, but it needs to be very short handwritten descriptors 
of BS regulations or numbers which cross-reference or feature elsewhere in the publication. So that is to aid your understanding. So when it says it should be a regulation of 415.1, you could then go to 415.1 and know that it's a 30 milliamp RCD at 5 by delta N. But you can always just write that in the edge. Similarly, when you get to part seven and it keeps saying that insulation will comply with 416, you're thinking, what the hell is 416? You could write at the end, that's actually saying insulation is destruction and IP2X, IP4X to keep you up to date with what 416 means. So you can do some notation, but you can't write pages of worked examples and formulas. What is not permitted? Additional personal notes pages. Yeah. Additional formula printed or handwritten. The only real formula that you that I think they should put in the book, which I would allow, would be the volt drop. Because some people just don't understand how the volt drop works. Even though the value is given in millivolts per amp per meter, they don't understand the use of the over 1,000. But all the other formulas are in the book, pretty much. With the exception of uh, ZS, ZE, and R1, R2. But you shouldn't have to do pages of extra formula in the book. There should be no additional printed pages, with exception to those above, which was the corrigendum. Okay, so no, uh, you know, no training company tra uh, handouts, guides, reference material, none of that. Handwritten procedures they shouldn't be in the book, and handwritten descriptors of regulations which do not feature else within the publication. So yeah, so if you're writing an alternative reference of a, of a regulation, that shouldn't be in the book. But fundamentally, the the, um, the training organisation should not be taking your regs book away and giving you a clean copy as long as you follow this rule. These, these, this list. Tabbing is acceptable, highlighting is acceptable, and minor notation is acceptable within that kind of limit. When a training company takes that away from you and then gives you a blank, com a blank copy, the purpose of the course has kind of become redundant because the purpose of the course is to allow you to develop an understanding of the regulations but also to work with it. And so ideally, if I had someone on the course with me, I want them to tell me at the end of the training that the book is a much more useful resource and is more of a tool to work further on. And if I've given them a blank copy, then they're not using their tool because they've adjusted their understanding, their visual reference within the book with the tabs, with the highlighting. And if I take that away from them, I'm basically being a twat. Okay, so um, do make sure that you kind of remind your training company that there is an allowance of this list. All right, if they take it away because it's their policy, then go to the Facebook community, let me know, and I'll let City and Gills know because it's not effectively preparing you for assessment. That's not preparing you effectively. What they're then doing is just pushing you to an assessment. That's not what they should be doing. All right, um, that's it pretty much. Uh, this just goes on to say if there are any errors in the book, then the college needs to provide sufficient information and training about that. There are many areas in BS7671 that do need a bit of revision. I do on my training course try to twist things in a way that is more understandable than the way it is written um but yeah um any questions about can i tab can i not tab can i highlight can i not highlight uh what the pass mark is this information is freely available and you can go to people who re who say what it is but i've just gone to city in guilds himself horse's mouth so to speak eal if you're using an eal qualification the same information is on their website you just got to go to the website and seek it. The handbooks, these handbooks are public information. There are some bits of information that are private, such as assessment guides, assessment materials, but not with the 2382, not with the 18th edition. That's more of an inspection and testing kind of area. So yes, this is free, freely available information. So get it, read it, interpret it. All right. Okay, guys, I hope this has been helpful. I will uh, see you very, very soon. Bye now.